Hey there, YouTube. No Adam Azer tonight, but fear not. I am Frank Stanfield, and we'll be answering your week eight fantasy football questions for the next hour. Whatever you have, waiver wire, trades, matchups, send it in. We'll try to get to as many as possible. Happy to announce that I am working with this gentleman for the first time. You know, we work behind the scenes. Of course, he does a great job editing work and all that, but we've never actually worked on air before. You know him. You love him. He is Dan Schneier, and he is a Giants fan. What's going on? <laughs> Yeah, we've got a lot of New York fans on this podcast. Frank, my buddy over there, is the Yankees and Jets fan. So it's been a good time for both Giants and Jets fans. And the good news for Adam, at least, is he's lost, I think it's now six straight polls. So six straight weeks of Tuesday night stream polls where it was a poll. You had two choices. Me and Adam chose one, and the audience went with the one I chose. So my expectation is Frank, who's a has just generally better takes than Adam Azer, overall we'll have a better shot to defeat me in one of these polls but i'm really excited to finally get to do this with you frank because obviously as you know frank runs our fantasy baseball today podcast he is the host and he helps me a lot during the busy times of my season when i'm writing the fantasy baseball today newsletter with content that i need to make my life doable and possible um, so i've never got a chance to actually work with frank but i've listened to him a bunch so now we get to talk about fantasy football tonight and that's my expertise anyway the football side of things yeah, and I'm happy to hear it too, especially this first topic that I want to bring up to you because admittedly, I do not know much about Sam Ellinger and I don't know that the audience knows much about him either. So I want to get your thoughts on that and the Colts offense. And then of course, we'll get into all your questions, so on and so forth. The poll, you mentioned the poll. Yeah. Our guy, GPT, put up a great poll once again. Here's what we got tonight. Did you ever toilet paper a house on Halloween as a kid? Oh admittedly, this is... This is kind of a malicious <laughs> poll, Dad. I don't know how honest we can be in answering this poll. But no, yeah. I've, never, I've never actually done it. I've never done it myself. Unfortunately, I have been part of a, not a TP. This is honestly even worse. I was part of a little crew that went around as idiot kids throwing eggs at houses. That is Ooh. way worse. Yeah. Jeez. It's not something I, it's not something I'm proud of by any means. Um, they were targeted. The houses were targeted. People we didn't like. Um, and people who would react. So it was a combination. It was me joining in on a crew that did it for like years in a row. And I was just there one of those nights and I never did it again. So I will at least give myself a little bit of credit for learning it even at that age when my brain was less developed that this was not a good idea for anyone involved. But I was part of it one time, Frank, and it was not my proudest moment. Oh, geez. Yeah, I've, I've I was talking to uh, Thomas before beforehand and yeah, I was more of like a family Halloween guy, you know, going out trick or treating. We're taking photos and having a blast, a good old time. I, I never got into it. I had friends that did the whole like egging and shaving cream and all that fun stuff, but uh, I never actually got into it myself. Uh, all right, before we get into the questions, I do see someone here in the poll. Frank, let's see the hair, huh? <laughs> All right. Well, I don't usually take my hat off, but so this is a uh, this is a running joke on the stream. Me and Adam and I have debated for a while who has better hair, Adam or me. Um, I think it's me. The polls have suggested it's me. I agree. The overall listener suggests it's me, but Adam won't give me that. I give him everything else. You know, I say he's a better looking guy overall. He's a better host. He's a better talker. But I wanted one thing, Frank, and he wouldn't even give me that. So I think they want to kind of juxtapose that your hair versus mine. All right. Thomas, let me know in the private chat, what's a fair <laughs> like total to try and get by the end of this stream? And if we get to that like total, okay. I will take my hat off because I can tell you for certain, my hair does not look anything like Dan's or Adam's. Ooh. There is something going on under this hat, and I will reveal it if we get to a certain like amount. So, Thomas, let me know how much we want to get to in the private chat. Uh, and we will I get feel like that. I've never seen your hair, Frank. I really think, oh. thinking about this now, I feel like I've never seen your hair. Most people have not seen my <laughs> hair. Uh, let's get into fantasy football. That's why the people are here. And let's start off with Sam Ellinger. Obviously, I would say that this shocked the NFL community, the fantasy football community. I certainly did not see this coming. The Colts announced that they are benching Matt Ryan in favor of Sam Ellinger. I know that Matt Ryan's dealing with an injury right now, but basically they were going to make this move regardless of right. what was going on with Matt Ryan. So, Dan, we were talking beforehand, and you said you do kind of have – uh, a take when it comes to the schematics of the offense and how things can change moving forward. So tell me what you know about Sam Ellinger. How does this affect the Colts offense? Is it arrow up for anybody? I don't, I don't know that it possibly can be, but if it is, let me know. Uh, what are your thoughts on Sam Ellinger? So my thoughts on Ellinger were this. He drew really good reviews his first rookie camp and his first training camp with the Colts. It didn't go anywhere, but then we saw last season 
he, or we saw uh, earlier, he was elevated as the number two over Nick Foles. So what that tells me is he's got good practice habits and he's impressing in practice. But the other reason why I think they went to Ellinger over a player like Foles, who has experience running an offense, is just the shift in what they want to do schematically as an offense. We saw two weeks ago the Colts do something they hadn't done all year. They jumped from about 8% to 47% no huddle rate. In that same span, they had a similar uh, percentage jump and no huddle rate in shotgun. So they went to heavy shotgun, heavy no huddle. They tried to repeat. It worked two weeks ago. The Colts finally scored some points. And then last week, they tried to repeat it again. Heavy shotgun, heavy no, heavy no huddle, very similar rates. And it didn't work. Matt Ryan simply wasn't the quarterback able to do that. So what I think they want to do is find a quarterback who can move the pocket, who they can use, who has mobility, and who they can run that type of system with a lot of no huddle, with a lot of shotgun, and not ultimately someone who they think can just stand in the pocket, a little bit of like a statuesque Matt Ryan type situation. And part of the reason, as Frank Reich said, well, and that's coach, uh, head coach of the Colts, he said, look, we failed Matt Ryan. We told him we were going to give him a good run game and a good offensive line. And that's what Ryan needed. He needed a good run game to go under center and run play action all day. That's where Ryan was at his best. They can't do that right now, given their uh, run game situation, and their O-line. So what are they going to try to do? Move the pocket. Why is that? Well, I'm going to dig into some numbers here from Ben Solak of the ringer, which really stood out to me. What have we noticed this year, Frank? Well, defenses are going with a lot of two high looks. That means two safeties over the top, not a lot of middle of the field, close cover one looks besides the giants and like one or two other teams, Cowboys being one of them. And so without that middle of the field, close safety with those two split safeties and sometimes cover three looks as well with three safeties, they're daring defenses to beat them underneath. They're saying we won't give you the big play. And one way to attack that has been, as you've seen from teams like the giants and like the Eagles is with a running quarterback, with a quarterback who will scramble, with a quarterback who can make plays with the run when teams are dropping defense. And as Ben Solak found, which I found so interesting, on all quarterback scrambles this season, they're producing overall a .508 EPA per play. And EPA is expected points added per play. And in comparison, he said, the league average pass attempt, taking away spikes and throwaways, is .212. So essentially, when these quarterbacks have decided to move the pocket and scramble and run for the free yardage, it's been a really successful play. And just to give you an idea of how that compares league wide, Patrick Mahone leads the NFL in EPA right now per pass attempt, and that's at point five three two. So actually, the league leader in pa in EPA, Patrick Mahomes at point five three two, is only slightly ahead of all quarterbacks who have scrambled on dropbacks. So what I think they want to get here is a quarterback with mobility, and that's what they're going to do: run a lot of no huddle, a lot of shotgun, and see if they can spark this offense a little bit by just taking some of that free yardage. All right, so we shall see when it comes to uh, Sam Ellinger taking over for the Colts here. You mentioned that he does add some mobility, and he rushed for nearly 2,000 yards in his four-year career at Texas. And I play in a super flex league where I am desperate for a QB2 yeah. right now. Like I have Jameis and the Panthers guys, and I'm trying to figure out how much fab I'm about to spend on Sam Ellinger. Like I am not happy about this, but I've got to make something happen. So, uh, all right, let's get into some of your questions. And look, I don't hate it, Frank, because you just mentioned a great stat. He rushed, rushed for almost, two, what, 2,000 yards at Texas. That's a lot of rushing yards yeah. there for, for a college career. And so if he gives you that Konami code type option in your super flex leagues, right, gives you another 30 to 40 yards rushing in addition to what he can do passing, that's going to help you get to a certain floor there for those weekly games. He's got good weapons, too. I mean, Michael Pittman, yep. Alec Pierce looks like he's a player. You know, a Paris Campbell's coming on strong. They have a trio of tight ends, Jonathan Taylor. They've got weapons. The offensive line has been kind of shaky, but we'll see what Sam Ellinger can do moving forward. Let's get into some of your questions, and let's see. Uh, this is not as easy as Adam makes it look, but I'm going to start <laughs> with this one from Brian. Pick up James Robinson or Deonta Foreman in a half PPR. Okay to drop Marquise Brown in a 10-team league for either. What do you think? Yeah, assuming you don't have the IR spot in this league to drop a player or to put a player like Brown there. I'm okay dropping Brown for one of these players, especially if you need the running back help now or the flex help now. For me, it would be Dante Foreman right now, even though he's also banged up in addition to James Robinson. I just think it's going to take a little bit of time for James Robinson to get a little bit acclimated to that offense. I think it's also weird that he's been playing through injuries and he kind of played very sparingly for the Jaguars last week, had like a negative four yard run. We didn't see him again against the Giants and then they traded him. I find that whole situation a little weird that the Jaguars traded him. He's under team control cheap. Um, so ultimately, I think it could take a little bit more time for Robinson. So if you need the help now, Foreman to me is the better option. Travis Etienne to the moon, by the way, right, yes. Dan? Like, we're, uh, is he top 12? You think he's going to be top 12 rest of the season? 
I think so. Uh, I watched him. Obviously, I watched this Giants film. He looked really explosive. Now, it's funny with Travis Etienne. There's so much good and bad littered on his tape because he'll completely miss a hole just pr- with processing issues. But then the Jaguars will get him in space and he'll show you what he can do in space. And so ultimately for fantasy, it's OK to take those negative plays when those positive chunk yardage gains outweigh him. And so, yeah, I really like Etienne moving forward. I say I could put him in the top 12 just inside of it. Yeah, I think he's probably right on that fringe. But if he's not a low-end RB1, I think he's a high-end RB2 moving forward. This one's from Jacob, 10-man, half PPR, trade Ramondre Stevenson and Cortland Sutton for Devontae Smith. I know you're a big Devontae Smith fan, but that seems rich to me. It's too rich. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson's yeah. not a player I would look to trade right now. I know Damon Harrison will say, oh, he was coming back from injury. That's partially why they didn't play him at all in this game. But the rate stats for Stevenson against the Bears were incredible. No one expected him to maintain that level of volume with Harris back. And I just feel like he's by far and away the best weapon on that Patriots offense. So I think they need to find a way to keep him involved at a heavy rate. So I wouldn't be moving Stevenson right now. Ramondre Stevenson on Monday Night Football, 77% of the snaps, 19 touches, and he posted career highs in both targets with eight and receptions with eight uh, in that Monday Night Football matchup. So looking good moving forward for Ramondre Stevenson. This one's from Lou. Thoughts on T. Higgins and Michael Carter for DeAndre Swift. I think I, and his full PPR, I think I prefer the Higgins side here. Higgins finally got healthy and we saw what he can do last week. That offense is starting to really find it's starting to click the offensive line is playing a lot better they're figuring out ways to attack these two high looks so for me i wouldn't want to move to me higgins is the best piece in this deal um and so i wouldn't want to make this trade yeah honestly i feel like higgins for swift straight up is probably a fair deal if you have a lot of wide receiver depth but throwing michael carter in the mix too i i don't really right. like doing that right now this one's from rice cake randy do you like rice right. cakes you know, I actually do like rice cakes. I, I really like like the flavored ones. You've heard like the caramel yeah. apple rice cake. Yeah. I think that's when you start to add the sugar in. If you add sugar to anything, I'll like it pretty much. I'm like a that's kid. Great. The way I eat, it's so it's so sad. <laughs> if the one of our other running jokes on this on this podcast is, let me get your take on this, Frank, because we do a lot of fun stuff on this stream, and I want to get your take on this one. And it's okay. People will appreciate it. I hope. A few months ago, Adam made the claim that people eat the Oreos for the cookie, not the cream. And then we ran a poll. What's better in the Oreo, the cookie or the cream part? And somehow it was like a 56-44 split. What do you think is better? And I I just really led the question here. So feel free to answer it truthfully and honestly, and I won't judge you. But is there any way you could be taking the cookie over the cream? So this is kind of a trick question, right? And I I think Scott White has the same exact take where he – he likes the cookie part over the cream. Oh. And why does that not surprise me about Scott? I don't, White? I don't think you could have one without the other, right? Like I can't imagine That's myself. Adam's eating, take. I don't think you could just <laughs> eat the cream of an Oreo cookie without the cookie. That like, that's just weird. <laughs> Yeah. I don't, I don't, I can't see myself doing that. I guess you could just eat the cookie part without the cream, but I, I don't think that's very fulfilling either. Um, if together, I, I still prefer the, the cream over the cookie, but. There we yeah. go. That's what I'm looking for yeah. together because they both complement each other. You need the other, but one obviously tastes better than the other in my mind. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true. But you break the Oreo to lick it. Like that's whatever. That's what the whole Oreo is for, right? So well, people do do that. Yeah, that's the Teddy KGB, the rounder Teddy KGB move, but the lick in the Oreo, you know, you got to. But I, I actually don't do that. I have a weird Oreo maneuver. So I'll actually take the top off of the sandwich, throw out one half of the cookie and eat it just the cream in the bottom half of the cookie, whatever side I didn't scrape off cream on. So I really, I'm really pro cream on this. Oh, I'm just, I'm a big dunker, man. (laughs) Just, just drop the cookie in the milk for six to eight seconds. And then you pull it back out, you know, that's the real goat right there. It's a little bit more work, but it's so worth it. So worth it. Anyway, rice cake, Randy, he does have (laughs) a trade question, half PPR, 12 team league, Michael Pittman and George Pickens, for AJ Brown. I would now, take the Brown side. Before they switched to Sam Ellinger, I would say that Pittman and AJ Brown probably had similar value, low end wide receiver ones in that range. Okay. But now with Ellinger, you're saying you would take AJ Brown. Yeah. I- even with even without Ellinger and Matt Ryan, I still think I'm taking AJ Brown. I just trust that okay. offense more and I trust the talent a little bit more. All right. Let's move over to this question from Skull. Kakashi. Someone cut CEH. Do I drop Damian Harris or Brian Robinson for him in a full PPR league? 
Yes is the answer. I would drop either of those players. I would lean toward Brian Robinson. I just don't see the value of Brian Robinson. He's like bottom seven right now in EPA per attempt. He's bottom seven in yards per all of the metrics you're looking for for a running back effectiveness. He's not doing a good job in right now. So the coaches seem to want to stick with him. They're not going to give those touches to Antonio Gibson for whatever reason, though. Antonio Gibson looks a lot more explosive out there and looks like a better option. So I still think he'll continue to get the volume, but it's bad volume. We know that, right? He doesn't get really many receptions, and they're not really a team that's often in the red zone and running well in the red zone. So I would take a flyer on TH, who at least is on an offense that's often in the red zone. Yeah, I'm going to push back a little bit on that one, just because Brian Robinson's coming off a game with 22 touches, right? Like, I don't know well, that yeah, how yep. talented he is, but the opportunity is absolutely there. 17 or more touches in back-to-back games, so... I think I'm all right dropping Damian Harris. Like he's not going to catch passes either. Ramondre looks like the guy. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I, w- I would make that move. I, I, I'm not overly excited about Clyde Edwards either anyway, but I do think he has more upside in the Chiefs offense than uh, Damian Harris does in the Patriots. Uh, all right. I am being told we've got some breaking news here that if Uh-oh. we get to 200 likes on the stream tonight, I will reveal whatever <laughs> is underneath this. hat. Oh. So if you want to <laughs> see the like. The hair on tonight's stream. We've got to get to 200 likes. We have how many people watching? 341 people watching right now. 69 likes. So let's get to 200 by nice. I don't know, uh, whatever point in the stream. And uh, I will reveal the mob. And my bold prediction will be once Frank does decide to reveal it, if we get to 200 likes. So smash that like button. If you're watching, literally all you have to do is click one thing, smash. But it will be better than Adam Azer's hair. That's my bold prediction. It will somehow be better than Azer's hair. Yeah, I mean, Azer's hair is just, I don't know, it's kind of generic, right? Like It's a you generic know. look, right? You know, you, you, need, you, go, to the, the you go to the barber shop and you're like, give me a men's haircut. And that's, that's what, what you is. get. <laughs> you get Adam Azer's hair, you know? it's That's exactly right. All right, this you next question it. is from uh, Jamie Lloyd, and a lot of people could have this question, waiver wire related. Tyler yeah. Algier or Chuba Hubbard? Who are you taking? I'm taking Chuba Hubbard. I really liked what I saw from Hubbard before he kind of was was a little bit sc- scaled back in that second half due to the injury. Um, now Foreman is the one who's also injured. I just feel like there's a little bit more upside with a player like Chuba. Algier has been very touchdown dependent this year. Even last week, for example, was not very effective outside of the touchdown. And I know, look, the Falcons want to run the ball. They're going to establish it, and they're not going to go away from it no matter what the game script says. We've now learned that. They do not care about the game script. They do not care how far they fall behind. And it makes a little bit of sense just because it's helped them stay close in games. They covered, I think, every game until last week, or they might have even covered last week's game against the spread. And going into at least last week, and I'm not sure if these numbers still hold. I have to check it. They were number two in football outsiders rushing DVOA with one of the top five offensive lines in run blocking from pro football focus. So they're actually pretty successful designing run plays. But ultimately, I feel like Caleb Hundley is the more effective runner in that scheme. And so I, I like Chuba. I think there's a little bit more juice there. All right, let's move on to this next question. What RB should I try to trade for net for in a 12 team full PPR league? Yeah, we, these questions are always tough too. I know, I'm putting you I on know. the spot, but like I do have an idea here, and you let me know what you think of it. Okay. First of all, I don't know why you would want to trade Leonard Fournette. I know the Bucks offense has it's been shaky, but even with that, Fournette is the RB eight in points per game in PPR, so he's still been really, really good. There's one name that I think you can get for him straight up, who might have a better role moving forward in a better offense, and that's Joe Mixon. Ooh, what do you think I about like that? that? Yeah, I like that move a lot. Adams, I, I've had a little pushback on Mixon earlier this year, but Adams showed me the light a little bit with Mixon. We've looked at some of the numbers, and lately Mixon has been a lot more effective than he was early in the season. I think it coincides with just that run game starting to mesh a little bit more together. Remember, they put a lot of new guys on that offensive line this offseason, so it takes some time for the chemistry to get together, specifically in the run game more so than even the pass game. Uh, so I do like that move a lot. Another player that I would consider that you just mentioned would be Travis Etienne. I mean, I think that's a little too rich, a little too bold. I would maybe look to do like ETN and then a piece at wide receiver. But I think there is a lot of upside with ETN moving forward. Uh, and and uh, for, Fournette has upside as well. But if you're really looking to trade Fournette, you believe like maybe, you know, you want to get rid of, get ahead of it if he's going to get injured. He's an older prospect and, you know, he hasn't looked that good this season. And the offensive line is not very good either over in Tampa. So maybe if you look at all those factors, ETN and something. But I think Mixon is the best play there. All right, and let's move on to this question from JRC. Drop A.J. Dillon for Deonta Foreman. A.J. Dillon coming off a game in week seven where he had four carries, four carries for 15 yards, and that was it, nothing else. And you know what? 
Uh, I drafted a few shares of AJ Dillon this year. I was expecting you know, RB2, low in RB2, something like that. And he straight up, he's been bad. You know, I've watched some Packer games. There's nothing. There, there's just like, there's no juice. They're not using it in the passing game. And they shouldn't because he's not really providing anything. So what do you think about dropping Dylan for Deonta Foreman? I can't believe I'm going to say it, but I'm with you, Frank. I don't hate this move at all. I kind of like it because I think there might at this point somehow be more upside with Foreman. The idea behind this, like the risk, I guess I would say, is do the Packers figure it out on offense at any point this season? But I'm not so sure that they will. They don't really have the receivers to separate in the passing game. They're talking now, Aaron Rodgers, at least this week on the Pat McAfee show, he was mentioned they really need to start moving different guys in and out of that lineup and getting different guys reps at receiver, which isn't a great sign in week set in week eight of a football season. And the offensive line is simply not blocking the way it was last year. So even Aaron Jones, the player who's found most of his fantasy value through the pass game, not even really as a running back or I'm sorry, as a pure runner. So yeah, I'm with you. I don't see the upside necessarily with Dylan anymore, but uh, beyond the name. All right, let's move on to this question from L Dashro. Great to trade. I give up Adam Thielen and Kirk Cousins for Kyler Murray. It's a it's interesting because I, I I think I like the trade, Frank, because I still think there is a little bit more league winning upside on a weekly basis with Murray versus Cousins. And I'm not really I don't think Thielen's worth much at all at this point. He's pretty well. He looks pretty washed out there. So I still think like you want to swing for the fences in fantasy. You want to try to play to win it all. And Murray could be a league winner down the stretch as a better chance, at least in my mind, than Cousins. So I would probably say I'd give it a B plus. Yeah, I think I would do it as well. You know, B minus. Um, okay. I don't. Yeah, I don't think Thielen offers much. And Kyler Murray looked a little bit better with DeAndre Hopkins. So hopefully that can continue to trend up moving forward. This question is from the Dark Knight. Trading Dalvin Cook, getting Tyler Boyd and DeAndre Swift half PPR. Who's who? Whose voice was that? Was that supposed to be a Batman voice? Yeah, this is the Batman. I'm trading <laughs> Dalvin Cook for get, getting Boyd and Swift half PPR. That's terrible. Can you, can you do the Bane too? <laughs> no, no, no. If you want to attempt it, you can. But <laughs> I, no. I, I was going to let you jump into that. No. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, he's trading Cook. He's getting Boyd and Swift PP, half PPR. I think I like the Cook side better here. Yeah, I don't I don't really love that trade either. Let's see what we got next. Uh, this one's from Liam Spence, full PPR to QB League. Trade Justin Je Oh, this is a big one. All right, trade Justin Jefferson, Joe Mixon, and Brian Robinson for Patrick Mahomes, Damian Pierce, and Gabe Davis. I'm gonna say, assuming I'm assuming you don't have a QB, a second QB, which makes if you don't okay, let me walk this back. If you don't have a second QB right now, or you're like looking for the Brett Rippians of the world, and you might be like thinking, Oh, do I have enough FAB to get a Sam Ellinger? Then I love this trade for you. Okay. And I really love the Mahomes Pierce Davis side. If you have a middling option at QB, I still like the Mahomes side. The difference right now with these Mahomes with Mahomes and Josh Allen and Hertz versus the rest of the field is so massive. At quarterback we've never seen any kind of like split that we've seen like we've seen this season at the quarterback position now over the last two seasons there has been a big drop off from quarterbacks one through six versus the rest of the field now we're seeing an even bigger drop off quarterbacks one through three versus even quarterback six and then another drop off versus quarterback 12. Mahomes is one of the only guaranteed scorers on a weekly basis in fantasy basically at this point um, with the way that defenses have overtaken you know Scoring is down, I should say. So I like Pierce enough. I don't. I think you're not losing too much Pierce mixing. I think you're gaining on the Davis Robinson side, and I think you're gaining on the Mahomes versus Jefferson. Yeah, I was gonna just if you break it down one for one, Jefferson and Mahomes probably have fair value in a two QB yep. league. They're both first round picks in that format. Uh, Joe Mixon and Damian Pierce. I, I think it's close. I think they're both top twelve running backs, and I'd rather have Gabe Davis than Brian Robinson at this point. So uh, I think it's a slight advantage. I, I would make that trade as well, assuming that you do really need a second quarterback. This one's from Stephen K619. Brian Robinson, James Robinson, Michael Carter, or Gus Edwards, rest of season. Which one are you Ooh. taking? I'm taking, this is a tough one. I think I'm taking Michael Carter rest of season, which I know is not very popular. A lot of people have jumped off that bandwagon since they traded for James Robinson, but I just think that Carter is still the guy that's been in that system all season that has the better chance of being the lead back there, and he's a pretty good explosive runner when he's given a chance, so I like Carter the most. Yeah, we were talking about this on uh, Beyond the Box Score, which, by the way, Dan, I filled in for you, and um, I definitely did not have as many advanced stats as uh, you and uh, Jacob Gibbs normally had, so... Uh... I'm sorry that I couldn't live up to. Uh, yeah, but you brought something else. You always bring something else to the table, Frank. So don't don't knock yourself. 
here's what I had. And by the way, you. I always get I always get lapped by Jacob anyway when it comes to the advanced stats. <laughs> no, Mike too Carter, bad. last year he had three games where he played 70% of the snaps or more. Week 7, 8, and 16, he averaged 20.3 touches per game. He was RB3 in PPR uh, in those three weeks combined. So the third best running back. But now that they traded for James Robinson, obviously that, that does take some of the luster off of Michael Carter. I, I think he probably gets you know, 12 to 14 touches per week moving forward. And, you know, James Robinson probably gets like eight to 10. If they're winning, you know, maybe he gets like 12 carries, something like that. But I do think Michael Carter is going to lead the team in touches uh, moving forward for the New York Jets. Rest of season, this one's from David W. Would you rather have Gabe Davis or Cortland Sutton? Mm. That's a good question, right? Um, Davis is kind of that Deshaun Jackson of yesteryear where it's kind of the big player, nothing so far, at least. I'm not so sure that sticks. I think there is a chance for him to improve from a volume standpoint moving forward. I would actually go Gabe Davis. I know it's probably not the popular pick right now. I did like Sutton a lot preseason, but to me, that Broncos office is broken. I think that Russell is going to be playing through this injury all year, and it's multiple injuries, too. That's the thing. He also had the shoulder injury earlier this season. So that offense, just without Garrett Bowles, their left tackle, and no real replacement for me, I just I don't see too much of an ups. Like, I don't see too much upside, I guess I should say, with Russell to Sutton. Versus at least Gabe Davis, you have the Josh Allen factor and you have the big play factor there, which Sutton at least hasn't done till this point. And I love the fact that he got the bye week to rest up that ankle a little True. bit more. So if Gabe Davis comes back 100% healthy, we could see a big second half of the season coming here for him. Uh, I saw a question I wanted to get to. Here we go. This one's from Kevin C. Drop Pierce, which I assume is it should be Alec Pierce. We're not dropping Damian Pierce for anybody at this point. Uh, but would you drop Alec Pierce for Marquise Goodwin? Paris Campbell, Van Jefferson in a standard league. And do you think Van or OBJ is a better stash? I would would not drop Pierce for any of these players. The only player I would consider would be good one if you need like a quick fix. Like if you're yeah. desperate at flex because with Metcalf likely out this week, it's a pretty good spot. The Giants defense has been starting to go on the downswing in pass coverage. Um, and obviously good. And we got Geno Smith, who's one of the highest producing quarterbacks right now somehow in the NFL, like one of the only guys who can throw downfield with any kind of consistency. So I do like Goodwin for this week if you're going to try to make a move like that. But rest of season standard, I would probably go Pierce. And then as far as stashes go, Frank, I don't really love either of those players too much as a stash. Um, if I'm looking for stashes, I'm looking for like Jamison Williams on the on the Lions. Early, I was singing the praises of Wandell Robinson forever. That's Pat ship has sailed. But I'd even stash a player like Kadarius Tony over an OBJ or Van. Wow, Dan wants you to stash Wandell Robinson and Kadarius <laughs> Tony. <laughs> no way, I would have saw that one coming. Well, the Wandell was a great call because I said it like that four is, weeks ago. Is. The yeah, Tony will be a the Tony will be a terrible call. So just just know that that's probably not going to work out. But there's upside if somehow it hits. I drafted so much Kadarius Tony in basketball too, and I'm <laughs> just zero after zero after zero. I think there's talent there, but I I think there's something more than an injury. That like there must be some kind of like work ethic or off the field issue that we're just not seeing behind the scenes. This one is from Oh Damn Wally traded Michael Pittman. I assume that's my Miles Sanders. By the way, if you can include first names in these questions, that, that does help quite a bit. Uh, Michael Pittman, Miles Sanders, and Gus Edwards for Stefan Diggs. Was that too much? That's my kind of deal. Oh, damn, Wally. I mean, I love the two-for-ones, the three-for-ones where you're getting the one side. I just want difference makers in fantasy. It's not as easy to predict preseason, though some of these guys like Diggs were easy to predict. Some of them didn't live up to the hype that were drafted in round one. He was one of them. Those a round one-two swing guy that did live up to the hype. I'll just take him. You know, I mean, look, you have to have some kind of depth at running back to be trading two starters like Sanders and Gus, but I'm not even so sure Gus Edwards is going to be a long-term starter for your team anyway. So I really just think you're losing Sanders who has injury history anyway, and hasn't cropped up yet. Pittman, who I think production will drop off a bit just moving forward. So yeah, I like the deal. I give it a B plus. Yeah, I do like it quite a bit as well, especially if it's in a 10 team league where you have fantastic depth and, and you just, you're trying to consolidate your team. I definitely like something like that. You know, Dan, in my home leagues, I've kind of been known as the shark, the, the trading <laughs> shark, right? Where I'm always trying to do these two for one trades. Everyone knows what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm clearly trying to get the best player in the deal and give up two worst players. I still send them <laughs> out. And as a result, my, my league mates don't really like me very much uh, because of that. <laughs> How about this take from Elliot Anderson? The cookie is the best part of a McFlurry for what it's worth. 
Well, if it's an Oreo McFlurry, I'll give you that because then you get the Oreos and that's got some cream in it. But as far as just like overall, that's an interesting take. I mean, I don't think McDonald's soft serve is that good personally. So I'm, I can get behind that, Elliot. No, nah, McFlurry is, uh, I don't really condone anything McDonald's related, but McFlurries are pretty damn good. I, I got to admit that. And the Oreo one is far and away the best one. Like, yes. it's not close. Not Chris close. Howard tries to convince me that the M&M McFlurry. Like, no. Who eats the M&M what M&M a McFlurry? Bad take. Not, what are we doing here? Like, I didn't I know Towers had that take, and I will definitely be, be talking in tomorrow about that ridiculous take. M&Ms over Oreos? Come on. All right, we've got 520 people watching right now live on YouTube. We appreciate all of you coming to hang out here on a How many Tuesday likes? Night. We have 140. Come on, man. If 60 can... more likes, and we get to see what's under that hat. Oh, and I God. really want to see I don't think I've ever seen it, so I really want to see it. Right. Can, can I raise the total? at the? No, that's not <laughs> All right, if we get to 200 likes, I will reveal what is going on underneath this hat. If you haven't seen my hair before, I've done a few like HQ hits where it's like gel to the side. It's not gelled. I got out of the shower like 30 minutes ago and I just threw this hat on. So whatever <laughs> comes out is <laughs> it's not going to be pretty. Uh, so please like the video. Once we get to 200, I will reveal what is underneath this hat. And we do have a poll that's going on right now. Did you ever toilet paper a house on Halloween as a kid? 59% of the vote is no. All right. We have some okay. upstanding citizens here on the fantasy football today. Good YouTube people. channel. So we do appreciate that. Um, Dan, are you a big Halloween guy? Not particularly, I wouldn't say, Frank. Uh, we were talking about this, I think, on the last episode. Can't remember the last time I dressed up for Halloween. Uh, oh, come on, so, man. Yeah, I think it dates uh, back to college, honestly. But the, no, it was a little bit after college. I did a Walter White one year, like in a hazmat suit with Jesse. So, you know, I don't mind doing it. I did Jesse, bro. I did you Jesse. Did Jesse. Right. Yeah, dude. Love it. Nice. Love it. <laughs> So we had the same idea. It was pretty easy. You just buy the hazmat suit, but, um, and I had the glasses on. So I know it's not that I'm against it. I just think I'm just like, I just haven't, I guess I haven't been invited to any good Halloween parties lately, Frank. I think you should dress up as Brian Dable for Halloween. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> you got to buy a bald cap and <laughs> just like shave the goatee in your face. And yeah. Then there you go. That's what we're rocking with. Um, if anyone wants to know what I'm going to be for Halloween, I'm not going to reveal it exactly. Follow me on Twitter. It's shameless plug at roto underscore Frank. I'll tweet it out over the weekend. It is Sopranos related. I'm doing a, a couple's costume with my wife. So now I really want to know what this is. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you. The show. I love uh, Sopranos. Right. Let's get back into some of the questions here. I couldn't think of a name. All right. That's fine. Drop Isaiah Pacheco for Garrett Wilson or Garrett Wilson. Excuse me. Drop Pacheco or Garrett Wilson for a bi week tight end. I really love the commitment to this. I think couldn't think of a name thing because he's also got the avatar with like, hello, my name is question, question, question mark. Um, so Great commitment. Uh, Pacheco or Garrett Wilson for a bye week tight end. Obviously, that means you need, yeah, you need to start a tight end. So which one would you drop? I would drop Garrett Wilson at this point. Look, it's a sad state of affairs, but somehow, some way, the Jets offense is better with Joe Flacco than Zach Wilson. I don't know how. I don't know why. I can't understand it. Joe Flacco is a statue back there. But right now, Zach Wilson is just missing on so many throws from a ball placement standpoint. It's it's incredible watching him, watching some of his film. Um the footwork is footwork was an issue at BYU. I just thought it could fix it really quick. I was very excited about Wilson as a prospect. I was definitely wrong on that one thus far. And I think I overlooked just how good that BYU offensive line was versus the competition they were facing. And then you get to the NFL and you got NFL level defensive lines against the middling to at best pass protection unit for the Jets. So without Joe Flacco, I'm kind of out on Garrett Wilson, unfortunately. So I would drop Wilson. This is such a sad state, too, because Garrett Wilson is so, so talented, good. man. Like, I saw this tweet, and I don't remember who it's from, so I apologize. But they have this open metric on ESPN, and it basically just shows how how often a player is getting open, a, a pass catcher. Garrett Wilson is fifth best in the NFL. So he's getting open, but A, the Jets don't pass the ball very much. And when they do, you're right, Zach Wilson's accuracy has been abysmal. I, I'm a Jets fan. I've watched every game. He misses routine throws all the time quick slant seems he overthrows everybody you know it could be a, a pass out to the flat and he'll throw it like a hundred miles per hour he doesn't have touch it's just it has not been a good start to his career uh they're still winning games in spite of it but uh yeah unfortunately i i, I do think it's okay to drop garrett wilson at this point this question is from brian katz non-ppr i'm two and five and i have waiver number one in my league rolls rolls over should i use it on michael carter two and five I'd roll it over personally in this format. I just think this is not a great week for the number one waiver priority at all. 
Uh, speaking of the last question, by the way, you said that you were going to drop one of those players for a tight end. I do like Greg Dulcich quite a bit. I, yes. I know the quarterback situation there hasn't been great, but he is a legitimate pass catching tight end. They used, I believe, a third round pick on him and he's looked really good so far. I don't know if you have any takes on Greg Dulcich. Yeah, Dulcich is actually my tight end one in this class. I don't know. For those who do follow Dave, Richard, and I during the offseason in, in March, we do draft profiles where we watch eight, six games, a minimum of six games of film of these college players, give a full scouting report, fantasy related. I got to do Dulcich this year, and I thought he was the best tight end in this class over McBride. He is the new age tight end, the one you want to split out in a three by one set and have him lined up on the boundary and just have him win with quickness and route running. But Clearly, as you've seen, he's able to make an impact early despite being on IR. That How rare is it, Frank, that we've seen tight ends, rookie tight ends, actually make an impact early on in the NFL? Even some of the most ballyhooed tight ends like TJ Hawkinson, who is kind of more always of a two-way tight end anyway. But even some of those guys drafted inside the top 10, top 15, haven't really had that kind of impact early. So I love that call by you, Frank. I think Dolchich is the guy to take right now uh, if you need a tight end for this week. All right, this next question is from Shane Tuck, 12-team, full PPR. Trade Christian McCaffrey and Adam Thielen for Miles Sanders, Ramondre Stevenson, and Deontay Johnson. My only other running backs are David Montgomery and Isaiah Pacheco, who is on a bye this week. Yeah, so it's full P team PPR, or I'm sorry, it's full PPR. And at least till this point this season, Frank, the 49ers have only, the 49ers running backs only have 18 total receptions. And that includes McCaffrey last week when they kind of had that design route. So from that standpoint, you're like, oh my God, are things going to get bad for CMC and San Fran? But I know that Kyle Shanahan is too good of a coach to continue to just run the same system despite having such a change in the talent. He will adjust his system to the skill sets that he has to work with. So I do think that the 49ers will start to make a concerted effort to get the ball to McCaffrey in the passing game, which makes me like him even more. This trade to me is basically McCaffrey for Sanders and Ramondre Stevenson. I'm not high on Deontay Johnson rest of season at all, despite the targets still flowing his way. He's doing nothing with them. That passing game is so much worse. Everybody said this off season, it can only get better without Ben. And I was like, is that really true? I never really bought that because Ben was bad last year, but Ben was still a veteran quarterback who processed post snap better than somebody like Mitchell Trubisky and obviously a rookie, Kenny Pickett. And we already went over. We don't like Thielen. So CMC for Sanders and Stevenson, Frank, I am going to go no on that. I think CMC is the best player in the deal by far, though. I do like Stevenson. Um, I still would go CMC there. Yeah, I, I agree with you completely. If you're trading McCaffrey as good as Ramondre Stevenson has looked and we like the workload, you have to get a better caliber player than uh, Ramondre Stevenson and Miles Sanders in return. This question's from Evan. Trade James Conner, DJ Moore, and Gabe Davis for Aaron Jones, Tyler Boyd, and Daryl Henderson. Half I'm PPR. doing it. Oh, half PPR. Yeah, it's close. Uh, I still think I'm doing it. I don't really like rostering injured already players like James Conner. You get good chance of re-injury. Good chance he's not effective the rest of the season. He wasn't effective when he first tried to come back from the injury. Made it worse. DJ Moore, I know he had a nice spike week, and the numbers suggest that he has been really good in the games Christian McCaffrey hasn't played. But I still have concerns about that passing game overall, especially with Ben McAdoo still calling that offense. I like Davis, but I still think you're getting a lot out of Jones, Boyd, and Henderson, especially if there's at any point the Rams can get that run game going with Henderson. And if they do follow through on trading Cam Akers, which I think they will. So... I will take that trade. What about you, Frank? Oh, man. Uh, Connor, cool. DJ Moore, Gabe Davis. Aaron Jones is clearly the best player in the deal. Daryl Henderson, last time we saw him, he played 70% of the snaps for the Rams. I, I think he's probably like a top 24 running back as long as Cam Akers is not involved there. I don't really have much of a take on Tyler Boyd. Like, I'm not excited to acquire him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like you're getting the best player in the deal. I think I would do it. Like, I don't love it. I, I was kind of high on James Conner coming into the season, but that's been a complete disaster. Uh, same thing with DJ Moore. So if you want to try and sell more now when he's coming off the good game, I don't mind doing it. Yeah, I think I would take it, but it's it's a pretty close deal. Uh, all right, let's see how much you actually like Wandale Robinson, Dan. Because <laughs> they're asking Rondale Moore, Rashad Bateman, or Wandale rest of season. That's a great question. So for me, it is between Bateman and Wandale here. I would rule out Rondale, Wondale, Rondale, same thing, but different. Um, Bateman, the thing that scares me, it would be Bateman for me easy, hands down. But what scares me about Bateman is he was very injury prone at Minnesota. And then he was injured again heading into the draft, which kind of clouded his draft profile. They drafted him anyway. Now he's injured again with this foot injury. He's not practicing to start this week. Who knows if he's going to play? He came back last week, played a little, got re-injured. So 
any of these players who are dealing with these kinds of injuries always scare me, especially ones who are dealing with re-injuries and nagging ones like a foot or lower body. So I'm going to go with Wandale Robinson, who I've now seen two games worth, and the route participation is phenomenal. The target percentage is phenomenal, and they're really trying to use him to move the offense. And it's not a surprise. It's why I said to stash him four or five weeks ago, because they were using Richie James in this role of the Giants to kind of move the chains. And Richie James is actually the Giants' leading receiver this year. And guess how many yards he has, Frank? Uh, let's go with 200. The Giants do not have a 200-yard receiver yet this season, despite being 6-1. Oh, and one. How oh, insane geez. is that? So he has about 191. So although the volume still will not be anything special in a Giants offense that doesn't really throw the ball that much, he's still the focal point of the passing game. I think he will be at least. So I like Wondell Robinson, especially if this is PPR league. All right, yeah, you mentioned Robinson's being targeted at a very high rate. He has 11 targets on 40 routes run over the past two weeks. So, yeah, he's he's betting, he's getting very um he's getting used very often in this offense and uh yeah i i would actually agree with you i really like what i've seen from mondale robinson so far all right well uh it appears that we uh, have gotten to 200 likes so oh here it is <laughs> i've gotta i've gotta take my hat off and i i again i don't even know what we're about to see because i've never seen it i don't know what we're about to see either i i yeah i got out of the shower and i just put this hat right on so dan <laughs> i have to take my headphones and order off in order to take my hat off so i'm going to throw it to you you can talk about uh answer this question in the meantime darnell mooney or deontay johnson rest of season while i do this big reveal okay the big reveal is coming i'm going to lean on mooney here i already talked about how i don't like oh what frank your hair looks great i i knew see i was so sure of one thing what i was sure of here yeah you got like that rock star flow going there you know you got like the the half shave type of look going on up top I'll take that over Azers any day, though. That's the thing. The generic Azer cut where he doesn't even do anything about Yeah, look at that. Dude, you might have the best hair on the show right now. So Should I do the rest of the show like this? <laughs> I like, yeah, 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 man. You look kind of like a rock star going. So you got rock star Frank on the show now. So yeah. I feel like Frank, a rock star, what, actually. What's your genre of music that you like, Frank? I don't know. I can't put you on any oh. kind of music. I am all over the place, okay. dude. I actually listened to the podcast a couple of weeks ago, and... I heard you say Almond Brothers. I was like, is this my dad talking or is this Dan <laughs> like, what, What's going on here? My dad, by the way, is like 60 years old to, to put that in perspective. So uh, not that I have anything against the Almond Brothers. I know that they are, uh, you know, a, a very, a very widely respected uh, band. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't know anything by the Almond Brothers. My musical taste is all over the place, dude. I listen you know to like, anything by the Almond Brothers. I feel like that's impossible. Uh, like I can't name a song, but if you played a song, okay. uh, like the okay. most popular song, I'm sure I know it. Like, I just okay. don't know the, like the names Fair of their songs. But Metallica is like far and away. Oh, okay, like, the metal. Like, I've, I've seen them like ten times in my life, but it, it's all over the place. Like I grew up listening to hip hop, like classic rock, like house music, techno, like all over the place, dude. Whatever you can think of, except country music. I, I can't do country. Music. <laughs> I'm like, gonna say everything. I <laughs> it's like sports too. I could watch any sport except hockey. I I like I just can't do it. Hockey. I we have very similar takes there. I'm a not a country music fan. It's probably the only genre I don't like. Though I don't. I can listen to house techno type music, Frank, especially if I'm at the gym and I'm trying to work out. But I do not have much respect for it. If that makes any sense, that's one of my <laughs> strong takes. I don't like when I go to see a live concert and there's no actual music being played and there's no musicians playing music. There's just some dude on a computer pressing buttons. That to me is you know so disrespectful. To press a button, dude? Come yeah, on. And like, it seems so hard. These guys, and they always have like that. You can see them always like doing that thing. They like to do that thing. And it's just like, what else are they going to do? They're not playing any music. So they have to do something with their time. Um, So I don't have any respect for live music if it's techno. So, but I am on your same wavelength with country and with hockey though i will say this about hockey frank have you been to any live hockey games live hockey is amazing i actually yes. went to a phoenix coyotes game back in the day like the two times that i visited arizona live really hockey is a totally different game because you can follow the puck live and it's just a different experience i can't follow the puck well when it's on tv from that angle so i'm with you on yeah. that it's the only sport i never really played growing up so i i think that's sure. part of it too let's get back to these questions dan and let's let's kind of do a little rapid fire here because we have a lot of questions in here we have 522 yeah. people watching right now 218 likes i did reveal this beautiful hair underneath this hat but you can continue to like this video we really do appreciate it uh all right let's see what we've got here hmm should I trade Christian Kirk and Rashad White for Devin Singletary and an extra third round pick? 12 team dynasty PPR. Christian Kirk and Rashad White for Singletary and an extra third round pick. 
This is my, a lock. Yeah, go ahead, Frank. My initial take is I think I would need a better draft pick in order to make this move. My initial take is do not do this no matter what the draft pick is unless it's a first-round pick. Yeah, I mean, look, Christian Kirk is a really good dynasty piece right now. He has signed to a long-term contract there with Jacksonville. He's building a rapport with Trevor Lawrence already. He's going to be back working with Lawrence for at least the next three years because they're going to pick up that Lawrence rookie option. So I really like Kirk as a dynasty piece. And then, straight up, I like Rashad White over Devin Singletary as a dynasty piece because the Bills just drafted over Singletary with James Cook. And I don't even know if Singletary is going to be back next season with the Bills. And if he's not back with the Bills, his fantasy value is going to tank immediately. Rashad White, on the other hand, already maybe looks like maybe a little bit more of an explosive option than Leonard Fournette and maybe a better dynasty piece than Singletary. But with Kirk involved, you definitely need more than a third round pick. I would say without a one, I wouldn't even do this. All right. This next one's from Sean. Time to drop Kyle Pitts for mm. Greg Dulcich. 12 team PPR. No, I'm just riding and dying with Pitts, Frank. Here's the thing with Pitts. There is a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel if you want to be looking forward with it. And that light would be this. The Falcons at some point are going to fall out of the playoff hunt. When they do fall out of the playoff hunt officially or even close to officially, they have to turn the offense over to Desmond Ritter. They drafted him. They're going to be in the mix for another quarterback in this draft. They have to see if Desmond Ritter can be their future. And without playing him at all this season, they put themselves in a tough spot going into the draft because they don't really know what they have. And then do they draft over him with another quarterback? They want to have some information on that. And once Ritter gets into the game, I think we're going to see a very different offense. They're going to trust Ritter to operate more of a traditional passing game. And that could help Drake London and Kyle Pitts. So to me, I would hang on to Pitts for the upside. All right, let's see what else we got. Would you drop Pitts for Dolchich, Frank? Somebody wrote emo for emo. sure. I guess that's for my hair. <laughs> yeah, it is a little emo, actually. <laughs> uh, I guess I deserve that. Uh, I would were call you, myself Were you an emo, emo band guy. fan? Uh, Like that what, like My Chemical Romance kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, like that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, I wasn't like super into it. I, okay. I know some of their songs. Um, you know, he was emo Frank like a few nights ago. Man, it, was a little, it was a little joke about the Yankees. Don't don't worry about it. Oh, dude, I was at the game. I was at game four. I, I saw that. I saw he posted you at the game. I'm like, why not go? You probably got like $16 tickets. I saw they plummeted all the way to like 18 that day. Oh, gosh. Sorry. Don't ask. Don't let me go on. about it. It's not fair. Like, oh, I'm a Mets man. fan. It's just unfair to get me going about the Yankees because right. I'm can so we... miserable myself about the about Mets that I have to take it out on you. Can we kick Dan off the stream? And <laughs> Do. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, actually, I was about to click something and then it went away. From Terry, 12 team league, half PPR, need a tight end, being offered Fryermuth for James Robinson. Mahalo from Maui, my brothers. I like it. I wish oh, I lived in up, Maui. Yeah, uh, sounds you, like a good life. Would you take Pat Fryermuth for James Robinson? I do this deal. I really do. I think Fryermuth is positioning himself right now on the radar of one of those rare must start tight ends. And that's so hard to find. And it doesn't mean he's going to score like 12 to 15 a week. It just means. Eight to ten. That's what these must in this day and age. That's what a good tight end does. That's what a middling to you know startable top ten type tight top ten type twelve tight end gives you. So I would take this trade personally. All right, let's see. We got a defense question here. Patriots Ooh. who are going up against the Jets this week, or the Cowboys against the Bears. That's a good one. I'm going to go with the Patriots, actually. I like the matchup better, uh, especially considering, you know, it seems like the Bears have started to figure something out with Justin Fields and that offense. And what is it that they figured out? Well, they figured out, let's go in the direction of the New York football giants and what they've done with a lot of design runs. Like there were nine design runs for Justin Fields. And what do design runs do? They make it really hard for the opposing defensive special teams team in fantasy to score. You know, it's hard to score when the quarterback's running the football. So on design plays. So I would go with New England here. All right, this one's from Dante. Tight end is killing me. Kyle Pitts, Taysom Hill, or Hayden Hurst, full PPR. I'm sticking with Pitts. Again, I'm riding and dying with Pitts. This isn't the best of advice, I don't think. Like, it's not, like, very nuanced, Frank. But, man, I just can't start guys like Hill and Hurst over Kyle Pitts. Yeah, like, Taysom Hill hasn't played more than 30% of the right. snaps in any game this season. It's What he's doing is just so wacky. But I told myself coming into week eight that this would be the week that I officially drop Kyle Pitts like way down the ranking. Rankings, so, yeah. I don't know that I would. I don't know that I could drop Pitts for any of these guys. But like, if you have multiple of them on your team, I I think it's okay to play Hayden Hurst over Kyle Pitts. Like, I I, I think that's fair. fine at this point. Uh, all right, let's see what we got. Oh, this is a take I can get down with from Mark Haskell. Little Nicky is the best Adam Sandler movie ever. 
now that I have Frank's attention, would you stream Russ or one of the New England quarterbacks? Six points. This is your take, Frank. This is your take is little Nicky's the best Adam Sandler movie. I just want to get this clear. I think I've seen you say this before, but I don't know if it's like a joke or it's like a. Can we clarify it? Is little Nicky the best Adam Sandler movie? I don't know if it's a joke either. I I do really <laughs> like it, <laughs> and I know a lot of people hate little Nicky. I, I like it too. I don't hate it by any means. Um, I but like to put it, it I, ahead of Gilmore and Madison. It's so tough. That is tough. That yeah. I you know what I, my take it. Oh, go ahead. I would I would take little Nicky, but yeah, that is a very unpopular take. People think this take by me is really unpopular, so I want to get your take on it while we're on the take while we're on the subject of Adam Sandler movies. People say, and I believe that Happy Gilmore and Billy Madison are the clear tier one, tier one right there. But I think tier two, there's one movie on its own, and it's Big Daddy for me. And a lot of people are like, that is the worst take ever. Why do you like Big Daddy so much? I'm like, Big Daddy's the most wholesome movie ever, and it's funny too. It's got so much to it. Like, So I think Big Daddy is the clear cut three. I, I don't have a problem with that take okay. at all. I mean, that's a great movie. Uh, you know, so me and you go together like lamb and tuna fish. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, for this question, R Russell Wilson, I assume that's Russell Wilson. Like, is he yeah. going to play this week? I don't know. Uh, Russell Wilson or one of the Patriots quarterbacks? No, I think Russ is going to play. He said he has Wolverine blood, whatever that means. Um, I'll take Russ because I just watched this Jacksonville Jaguars on defense on film and they're not even close to where they need to be. They gave up so many, so much yardage to the Giants. 438, I believe it was, which is the most of the season for the Giants offense. Uh, so I'll go with the matchup play here and I'll go stream Russ. All right, let's go over to Kevin White. Oh, wow, man, look at that. that. Yeah, yeah, Kevin. Mr. Met. Rank Frank, can I ask you this? Can I ask you this before we do the question? Okay, sure. who should be more sad about their season? Yankees fans or Mets fans? Mets fans. Okay, agreed. I just want to make sure that, that you were willing to admit that because yeah. for us, it felt like it was our mesh, magical special season. I guess the same could be said about the Yankees, but I feel like every Yankees fan I talked to, even throughout the year, was like still the same old, like, we're going to suck. We suck in the playoffs. We're still a team that strikes out or hits home. Or like, they still had like all that. The Mets fans, we had so much hope going into it. Yeah, I mean, you know, but that's what Mets fandom is built on, I right? Know, it's the, the hope being torn down. <laughs> uh, you, seem like, you, see, you seem like you enjoyed saying that, just going to be honest with you. Oh, I will fully admit that I am I am a <laughs> fan of New York teams that openly roots against the other New York team. <laughs> Even though we're not in the same conference, like it doesn't matter. Like if if I if I am not doing well, then I don't want other teams in New York to do well. So like anti Mets, anti Brooklyn Nets, uh anti, anti -Giants. Giants. Yeah, for sure. Like totally out of the <laughs> Uh all right, Gus Edwards, Deontay Foreman, Khalil Herbert. How do you rank the three? Um, so I'm assuming wa waiver. Okay, so it's rest of season. I'm gonna go Herbert Edwards Foreman. Interesting. Because yeah, where were you at? I think I would go the complete opposite. Oh, okay. Order. I th I think I would take Gus Edwards first. Oh, I had Edwards good... second. I had Edwards second. Oh, all right. Yeah. So okay. I think I, I would go Edwards Foreman Herbert. Okay. I like Herbert. I like the talent, but yeah, the offense is still questionable. Is he going to get more than ten to twelve touches? Often, I I don't know. I can't say that. I just think in the case of any injury to anyone else in either of the in any of those three backfields, Herbert has the most upside, right? So if Montgomery goes down, Herbert could potentially be a league winner. I don't think if Hubbard goes down, you're going to see that with Foreman in that offense. And the same thing with any injuries to the rest of those Baltimore backs. So they're still going to cycle in other guys. Yeah, I think if you look at it from that perspective, if you just want someone to stash with the most upside, then I agree that it's Herbert. If you need someone to play, I I would probably sure. go with Edwards. That's fair. Edwards this should be the number one if you need someone to play right now. All right. I don't know how to pronounce this name, but uh <laughs> looks I am Ryamis. Yeah. Come on, is. Frank. He keeps asking this question, or she, but I'm going to just <laughs> uh I haven't really looked at the matchups yet. I I do that mostly on Wednesdays and Thursdays, but yes. Flex Amonra St. Brown or DJ Moore versus the terrible Falcons. You demand Dan. Go Mets, Frank. Let's go. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Look at look at how he said that, Frank. Frank really doesn't like the Mets. You know, you usually find it the opposite way. The Mets fans who don't like the Yankees, but you know, I guess I'm a hater. I'm a hater for sure. That's okay. So am I. But um, I'll go Amon Ross St. Brown if he does play. And we don't know yet if he is going to play, but if he plays, I'd rather Amon Ross St. Brown. All right. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, Mike Crawford, would you drop James Robinson or Jeff Wilson for Khalil Herbert? That's a good one. Um, I, 
it's a similar, you know, your similar concept across the board here. You're looking for injuries to really get unlock any of the value for any of these guys. I think I would drop Wilson though, because there is still the opportunity for Elijah, Elijah Mitchell to come back off IR and even crowd that thing further in the case in which look, even if McCaffrey gets hurt, Wilson isn't the same guy he was before that time before they made the trade. So I think I would drop Wilson for Herbert. All right. We've got a quarterback question here from Christopher pick up Justin Fields or Daniel Jones to start over Aaron Rodgers. rest of season. It's kind of hard to say rest of season with a quarterback. I, I would just play the matchups uh, go week by week basis, yes. but would you take fields or Daniel Jones over Rogers this week? Streaming wise, I would take Daniel Jones this week against the Seattle defense. Seattle defense has been pretty vulnerable. The one thing I would keep an eye on though, is the weather because it is supposed to be a really rainy game and that could really impact the passing and make it sloppy. Though Jones really derives most of his value from the run game anyway. At this point, he has more rushing yards than Najee Harris on the season, which is a fun fact stat that I like to say, Frank, because it's just I was very low on Najee Harris. He was on my avoid list, and I just was taking a lot of heat from shout out Adi, who you, who you know very well. One of one of the main the guy who runs editorial gave me a lot of heat for Najee Harris. So I hope he's listening to this, to be completely honest, so he can so he can understand why I was so down on Harris as he as he listens to Daniel Jones at rush him through eight weeks or whatever it is. But um, I'll go Jones here. I like the matchup. I'm just saying that every single Giants question we've had today, Dan has taken the Giants. That's not back. true. That's not true. We've had like two. We've had like two. It was like Wandale and Jones. Uh, this is <laughs> from Jacob. Kicker question. I don't know much about qu kickers, but uh, Tyler don't Bass. Kicker, or, don't uh, kicker question us. Come on, Jacob. You're a regular on the show. Don't kicker question us. Bass. Bass. Take the Bass. Kicker on, the, on the better offense. Right? Yeah, like, Bass. Like, All right. He's on the Bills. Take the Bills kicker. This one's from Chase. Greg Dulcich or Mike Gesicki? Ooh. I'll go Dulcich. I just don't trust Kaseki's role in that offense at all. I've never played in one of these leagues, but I really would like to. So this yes. is a question from Michael regarding a guillotine league. Josh Allen, Devontae Adams, and Devontae wow. Smith are available. Should I go all in on Allen, Allen and Adams? I have Dak, and I am weak at wide receiver. I have 886 left. So first of all, Frank, can I ask you to pronounce what you think these leagues are called again? Guill guillotine? Guillotine? <laughs> guillotine gu guillotine 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 there you go, guillotine, there you go. <laughs> guillotine it's all right it's all right i do it all the time and people crush me for it on my podcast but i will say this in guillotine leagues the one thing you want to do is manage your budget because as teams are eliminated there are more free agents that's just the obvious thing less fewer teams mean more free agents so you want to have money for those later weeks but there are Throughout a guillotine season, there are some players that come up that are worth spending a big chunk of your budget on. Justin Jefferson came available in one of mine. I spent a chunk on him. Jonathan Taylor, I spent a chunk on him. Josh Allen is one of those players for me. So I would look at the recent waiver reports and the transactions. Look what you need to pay. Look for the baseline of what you need to play for one of these top players and pay that for Josh Allen. Devontae Adams, Dante Smith, I'm okay letting somebody else pay for them. I really am either going high, you know, the high upside guys like Allen, the few five to 10 difference makers or what I love to do in guillotine is take like the ninth or 10th best guy on a given week on the waiver report and just throw in like a $12 bid or a $14 bid and see if you can sneak them through. I did that with Juju Smith Schuster in one of these and now he's starting to come on. So you can get like those types of round four, five, six range picks preseason in that range for 12 bucks, 15 bucks, um, and then still man maintain a, a, you know, a very healthy budget. All right, let's get to this question. This one's from, Dan, one point PPR, Michael Carter or Amari Cooper? Uh, let's assume that it's not for this week. It's just rest of season. What do you okay. think, Michael Carter or Amari Cooper? It's Cooper hands down for me, rest of season. I mean, look, Cooper is a player I would take even if the situation was going to be per set the rest of the year, but it's not. We are going to see some Deshaun Watson at some point. And if you're lucky enough to make the playoffs in your league, which I hope you are, that's going to be for those playoff weeks. You're going to get some Deshaun Watson to Amari Cooper, and that gives him way higher of a ceiling and honestly a much higher floor than a player like Michael Carter. All right. We've got about five minutes left here on the stream. So let's try to go rapid fire, get to as many of these questions as we possibly can. This one, make sure you hit that like button, by the way, please. Yes. Hook us up. We're at 251 likes, 536 people watching. So help us out there. This one's from a Numenati. I have Ertz and Knox. I will monitor tight end and waiver wire, but I flipped Kyle Pitts and Duvernay for Curtis Samuel. Ugh. Seems fine. Not to me. No. No. I just, what's the upside? I mean, Samuel and Duvernay, whatever, you rule them out. It's basically just like cutting Kyle Pitts to me in in, in a sense because I don't really think you're gaining much from Samuel over Duvernay. 
So I don't know if I'm at the point where I'm cutting pits. I still think there's more upside. He's still one in my mind, one of the most talented tight ends in the NFL. Um, just pure talent wise. They obviously can't, un- they can't harness it yet. So I have Ertz and Knox. Yeah. I mean, at least you have Ertz um, though. Ertz, I'm starting to lose some faith in too. Now that they have Hopkins back. All right, this one's from Chris. Should I drop Michael Gallup for Miko Hardman, who is on a bye but had a monster week this past week? Somebody in my home league picked up Miko Hardman and started against, started him against. <laughs> and I just, I, that's I can't so tilting. That. It's so annoying. That is so tilting. I'd be on full tilt if I saw that happen. And he had a quote unquote good week, like fantasy points wise, but it wasn't a good week. It was all just a touchdown heavy week, and it's right. so easy to see that regressing. So I would not drop Gallup. I still think there's more upside if Dak can kind of get going. All right, this one's from Jay. Should I drop Gus Edwards for Gabe Davis? Yes. Yes. Uh, this one's from our friend Riami's or Ryan's. <laughs> Marino and Little Nikki is boss. Yes, I can get behind that. Uh, Waterboy is the best football comedy. Yes. Ooh, I like best Waterboy football that. comedy. It's definitely in the mix. Let's think if there's anything that beats it as far as football comedies go. I guess uh, like Little Giants is that technically a comedy? The replacements. Oh, oh, the replacements. The replacements. The replacements. No, no. Tom has nailed it My as favorite. always. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no. It's got to be replacements. You'll come to learn this about me, but uh, I, there's like a million movies I haven't seen. I've I've never seen. <laughs> replacements, so. Why? Oh, it's so good. Oh my! You got you got to see the replacements. Yeah, on, no, I'll add it to the list. I've got a lot of movies. You know, I I didn't <laughs> see Twenty Eight Days Later until last weekend. I don't know if that's like a bad movie not to is see. That, that zombie but, movie. Yeah, it was pretty good. I know it's like very, cool it was a very niche movie right there to pull out. That, like, we're going from like the Peaky Blinders guy. I think, uh, so. I think so. I, sure. I think so. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. like uh, Killian something. Yeah, I Killian think. Murphy. Right. It's yeah, actually yeah. pretty. It's for as far as zombie the zombie genre goes, it's one of the best. I would say. Yeah, I love how I keep saying uh, rapid fire, and then we just don't answer any questions. <laughs> this one's from Jonathan. Trade Jalen Hurts and Najee Harris for Kelsey. I have Danny Dimes and Saquon. Oh, geez. Wow, that's tough. Uh, I guess it depends who your tight end is now. I mean, I'm guessing it's pretty bad. I wouldn't do it. I love Kelsey. Trust me. Yeah. Um, Yeah. I love Kelsey, but at the same time, I don't think I would do this one. This one's from Bryant. Uh, Trade Henderson, who I'm going to assume is Daryl Henderson, and Alan Lazard for Damian Pierce in PPR. Yes, please. Yeah, that's that's a definite. Yeah. All right, Love this it. one's from Chase, Wandale Robinson, or Paris Campbell. Also Dolchich or Gasecki. So I will go Wandale and Dolchich. I agree. This one's from MSH, Week 8, Waiver Wire, Q&A. Best pickup streamers and stashes. Right. I didn't read this question beforehand, so uh, I guess it's not really a question. This one's from Nelson, Blockbuster Trade, full PPR. I traded Chris Godwin and received Keenan Allen and David Montgomery. Any thoughts? Ooh. Godwin for Allen and Montgomery. I I think I don't like it, unfortunately. I think I like the Godwin side the most. Yeah, it's so tough. Like if Keenan Allen is healthy, right. I would like it. But it's just so hard to say because he didn't play much last week. He didn't he didn't look very good. Yeah, that one's tough unless you're like really desperate to just get some depth on your team. Uh hair rankings. Jamie, <laughs> Dan, Frank, Heath, Adam. That's a fair ranking right there. I, I really like that ranking. Look, nobody's going to touch Jamie. I knew that going in. Yeah. Frank, look at you all the way up at number three. It's pretty damn good. I Just happy to see Azer yeah. last. Azer deserves <laughs> last. You know what? If I if I slick my hair back, I guess it kind of would look like Heath's hair. But yeah, yeah I can most see of the that time, too. I just keep it hidden underneath this hat. Like I'm growing it out again. I guess I could put it in like a man bun or something. <laughs> I always wanted to get like braids, like just like two big Ooh. braids in my hair. Kind of like Jeremy Lin had back in the day. Oh, the Lin braids. Oh, my yeah. God. That uh, would look I've, wild. I've done so much wacky stuff with my hair back in the day, Dan. Like, it's... <laughs> I used to have a rat tail. Like, I just... A rat tail? What? But if you bring something up, I'll try it, dude. Like, I just... <laughs> I like to try wacky stuff when it comes to the hair. Uh, All right. Uh, I think we pretty much answered a bunch of questions here. What I want to wrap up with, Dan, is just some sure. quick uh, thoughts on the waiver wire. Obviously, there's waiver wire here in the title here on YouTube for those watching. If we didn't get to your waiver wire question, we apologize, of course. But just in terms of priorities this week, I think you said earlier, but Daniel Jones over fields, right, if you need a quarterback? Yeah, based on the matchup, I do like Jones the most this week at quarterback. Okay, and if you're ranking the running backs, the big running sure. backs, they might not be available in all your leagues. I understand mostly shallow leagues, but Gus Edwards, Michael Carter, the Panthers guys, how are you ranking those four? I'm going Gus one, Carter two, 
and probably Shuba just ahead of Foreman. And then that's the three, four there. Oh, this Jeremy Lin. Oh my God. Look at it. Can I pull this off or what? I think you should try. That's all I know. I think I can, but I mean, it takes a Please while try. to throw your hair out like that. Like, it, it does. Takes a long time. <laughs> I, I do recommend uh, the, the 38 in the garden documentary. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I wanted to see that. Yeah. Wondell Robinson, I think we've established as a clear wide receiver ad. If you're looking for that in deeper leagues, let's say you need one for this week, Paris Campbell, Marquise Goodwin, Donovan Peoples Jones. What do you think about those three? It's definitely, definitely good one for me. Assuming Metcalf is out, he's most likely going to be out. I really like Goodwin in this matchup. All right, Dan, this was a lot of fun. Uh, first time hanging out together. We did some wacky stuff, obviously. Uh, Adam Sandler movies, uh, Halloween. That's how it always goes. That's how I like it. Egging, toilet paper, hair no, reveals. No, that, that, that part I'm not very proud of, I'll be honest. <laughs> There's a lot going on. For anyone still watching at this point, please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like. like this video as well. Make sure you follow Dan on Twitter at Dan Schneier NFL. You can follow me at Roto underscore Frank. Uh, I don't know what to promote. I don't know when the next time they're going live on the stream is. So I'm just going to wrap up. For Dan, I am Frank. Thank you all for listening and watching this live stream edition of Fantasy Football today. I will be back again on Sunday. Bye-bye.